It is the end of December 2021 and I'm in Arizona's Superstition Mountains for a backpacking adventure. I'm very excited. This is my first backpacking trip in the southwest. Obviously first backpacking trip in Arizona. First backpacking trip in the desert. A lot of firsts for me and the scenery is already looking pretty incredible. Now I came out here expecting the Arizona desert to be warm and dry but on this trip it's actually going to be cool and wet. I may have rain over most of the next three days culminating on night three with a heavy rainstorm, potential thunder, near gale force winds. I'm hoping that stays pretty mild but once I get through that the final two days of my trip are supposed to be nice and beautiful. I've got about eight miles to go today. It's time to hit the trail. I really love all these cacti. They're pretty cool to see. Should be a lot more in my future. The desert is very green thanks to a lot of recent rains. My journey starts along the Dutchman's Trail. There's the Peralta Trailhead. Pretty full this morning. I'm already loving it out here and I'm barely getting started. Rounded a bend and now I'm looking out in this awesome valley here. What a landscape. I mean, this is just unlike anything I've ever been in before. Super, super sweet. These cacti are massive! There's a blue tent down there in the bottom of this valley. I'm not sure if the trail works its way down there or if they just wanted to pick a spot because I do believe that pretty soon I'm going to start climbing for the next few miles. So that blue tent that I spotted did end up being way off trail. Those people must really know their way around the area to pick a site so far off the beaten path like that. Good for them. A beautiful day so far. Mild temperatures, mostly cloudy. I believe that this is Miner's Needle. My climb is starting in earnest. I believe that this may be the biggest climb of my entire trip, so time to go ahead and knock this out and continue rolling along through this stunning landscape. Looks like my trail is going to end up switchbacking out of the top of this canyon here. Pop me out the other side. The far side of Miner's Needle 
looking down into Miner's Canyon. That's where I've been coming up. Still a little ways to go. Made it up to this little saddle here. This is going to be where I break off of the Dutchman's Trail and I hop on the Whiskey Springs Trail. Once again, the landscape is just spectacular up here. A lot of greenery, fair amount of water. Can't ask for anything better. I'm dropping down into this canyon Although I know I'm going to have to climb back out at some point. What goes down must come up. There are actual real trees down here at the bottom of the Whiskey Springs area. And uh, Whiskey Springs appears to be a bit of false advertising. I've only come across water so far. Through a lot of this section, I'm finding it easier to just follow the stream bed than to follow the trail because it's gotten quite overgrown with a bunch of sticklers. But look at what's ahead. Oh boy. Finished up my stretch along the Whiskey Springs Trail. Now I'm on the Red Tanks Trail for another mile or a mile and a half before I'm going to start looking for a campsite for the night. This is a really cool little campsite here right off the Red Tanks Trail. I'm going to keep pushing along but it is definitely tempting to want to stay at this spot. Ooh buddy, the Red Tanks Trail through here is more of boulder hopping than any kind of trail. Awesome big cave up there. I'm still struggling to find the trail through this section, making very slow progress. Ooh, sight for sore eyes. Finally back on the trail. Probably took me close to an hour to go. Maybe a quarter mile back there. Hopefully I can uh, pick my routes a little better for the rest of the day. All right, now I should really be closing in on camp for the night. I'm hopeful to find a spot pretty soon. Home sweet home. Found a nice little spot here, a couple hundred yards directly down from the intersection of the Red Tanks and Hooley Bacon Trails. The sun's about to dip down behind the canyon walls, so I'm going to go ahead and scurry scurry to get set up. The legend of the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine details how a German immigrant discovered a mother load of gold in the superstitions during the 19th century. Never located, it is now considered the most famous lost mine in American history. On this trip, I'm using the Superstition Wilderness Map by Beartooth Publishing, supplemented by the free U.S. Forest Service Visitor Map app. Let's take a look at the map for day one. I started at the Peralta Trailhead, followed the Dutchman's Trail through Barkley Basin, up, 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 up to the Miner's Summit to connect with the Whiskey Spring Trail, which I then took to Red Tanks through Upper LaBarge Box 
and I set up camp for the day right below the intersection of Red Tanks and Hooli Bacon Trails. Day one was about nine miles. Well, day one of my trip in the soups has been an adventurous day. Great day, beautiful, beautiful hiking in and out of the canyons, coming around Miner's Needle. Just all the greenery and water that's been available on this trip has made for some very beautiful scenery. It has been a difficult day. The Dutchman's Trail was not bad at all. The Whiskey Spring Trail started to get a little more difficult and then the Red Tanks Trail was quite challenging, especially in the section soon after the intersection with Whiskey Springs where it was just tough to follow the trail, a lot of bouldering, climbing up and down. And then finally once I got back on the trail, it wasn't as bad, but it was still a bit overgrown in places. I've got camp set up. I'm going to gather some water, get some warm clothes on, eat some dinner, and settle in for what I hope will be a relaxing evening. As long as nothing crazy happens, that'll be the end of day one. Good night. Good morning. Made the day two. My backpacking adventure in the Superstition Wilderness, Tonto National Forest, Arizona. Had a calm night last night. The uh, rain started before darkness had fully enveloped the area, but it was just light intermittent showers, so not a big deal. It does mean that I'll have to pack up a wet tent this morning, but it's probably not going to be the only morning of this trip where I'll have to deal with a wet tent. And I think it's kind of funny to be out here in the desert and uh, have to deal with, uh, with a situation like a wet tent. Of course, the rain brings life, so it's no complaints from me at this point. I do hope that it holds off throughout the day for the most part and let me get to camp before any big rains come in. We'll see how that goes. Today could be my most difficult day of the trip or it could be a pretty reasonable day. It really depends on the status of the trails. I'm going on the Hooli Bacon Trail, the Peters Trail, as well as an unofficial cutoff between the two. So if those areas are pretty overgrown and tough to follow, it could be a difficult day. If the, if the trails are nicely maintained and not too bad, then it could be a pretty reasonable day because my elevation profile is not super intimidating. I won't know until I hit the trail, so I'm going to go ahead and get camp packed up and then I'll be ready to go. about 20 minutes in so far and it's been very slow going for me the trail has ranged from faint to imperceptible and it's pretty much all been choked with thorns along the way so if it continues like this I think it'll be doable but it will be a very slow paced day Herman Mountain to the left of the Hooli Bacon Trail as I travel northwards. Coming off the north side of Herman Mountain there is Trap Canyon. Fortunately I don't have to go up that, it doesn't sound pleasant. I'm continuing on the Hooli Bacon Trail until I look for my unofficial cutoff in a little bit. The Karens have really been saving my bacon along the Hooli Bacon Trail. If it wasn't for them, I would have been lost a long time ago. I kind of just try to hop from Karen to Karen, taking the path of least resistance that I hope is off in the trail. And uh, so far, so good. I'm coming up to the unofficial trail intersection and you know, it got me kind of nervous if there's no Cairns on that. It may be just me walking across the landscape, but uh, we're about to find out before too long, and I'm certainly hopeful for the best. I'm not too sure whether I found the unofficial trail or not, but I'm moving in the direction I need to go. I believe 
So I'm gonna kinda end up going up over that saddle there, but we'll see. Finally made it up to the top of that saddle. Took a good hour and a half. It was a real two steps forward, one step back type ordeal. That is Music Mountain in front. I'm going to continue heading in a west-northwest direction through this area until I can hopefully connect with the Peters Trail. Looks like something met its demise out here. Found my way to Peters Trail. There's a small care in here beside me. I cannot in good faith recommend taking that cut off through the horse camp basin. I never saw any semblance of a trail at all through there. It just turned into a multi-hour thorny bushwhack. But what's done is done. Peter's trail looks looks pretty faint, but it looks really good to me. So I'm gonna look for a clear spot for a late lunch here and then hopefully the second part of my day I can make a little better time than I did over the first part. Dropping down into Peter Canyon. The weather today has been absolutely perfect, mostly cloudy, comfortable temperature for staying on the move. Good for me so far. Peter's Canyon continues down. I'm going to break away out of it now and carry over Peter's Mesa, continuing along the Peter's Trail. A rowdy little climb here. What a view to look back on though. Incredible landscape here in the Superstition Mountains. And this is the view from the other side of the Mesa looking into the area in which I'm headed. The Peters Trail cairns are blazed with red and even just those little splotches have been a huge huge benefit to keep me on the right track. The sun's already dipping down in the canyon. I hope I'm within a half mile mile at the most from finding camp for the night. A very interesting feature there, that appears to be a man-made rock wall. I'm not sure what the purpose is, but it certainly would have taken a lot of work to put that thing together. Now the sun is good and set behind the mountain right ahead. And I'm still looking for water and camp for the night. Closing in on water, and hopefully camp. Home sweet home. Found a really nice little site here, tucked in some trees. Did not expect to be camping in the trees on this trip, but I'm happy about it. I already dipped down to the creek and grabbed some water, so it's time to get set up before it gets too dark. Let's take a look at the map for day two. I started at my campsite near the intersection of Red Tanks and Hooley Bacon. Followed Hooley Bacon around Herman Mountain. Took the unofficial cutoff through the Horse Camp Basin to connect with Peter's Trail, which I followed across Peter's Mesa down Charlie Boy Canyon to set up camp around the LaBarge Creek. Day two was about nine miles. Now day two was a tough day, but a good day full of adventure. It's already dark. 
I've got my tent set up, got my water gathered. I'm gonna settle in and rest up for another day of adventuring in the superstitions tomorrow. That'll be the end of day two. Good night. Searchers still set out yearly in attempts to locate the Lost Dutchman's gold mine. There are at least six known deaths attributed to people hunting for the gold. The most recent tragedy occurred in 2010 where three searchers for the lost mine went missing. Their remains were located early the following year. Good morning. Made the day three here in the soups. Calm night last night. A little bit of rain started around 3 a.m. but it is not raining right now so hopefully won't have to pack up in the rain but we'll have to pack up another wet tent again. No winds to speak of either of the past two nights which has been nice for me. Feels like I've been out here a lot longer than two days. I've seen a bunch of cool things. I've put in a ton of work but I've still got several more days of exploration left. I'm hoping that today will be my easiest day of the trip so far. I believe that the trails I'll be following should be more well traveled and therefore easier to follow and my total mileage is not that high as well. I'm going to head to the second water springs area. I'm going to get camp packed up here in a minute and then it'll be time to hit the trail. Well, this will not come as a surprise to those who are familiar with the ways of wilderness. But as soon as I opened my big dumb mouth and said that I wasn't going to have to pack up in the rain, it started raining again. So I spent another 45 minutes or so in my tent and uh, packed up during another lull here. I believe the forecast was it's supposed to pretty much rain all day today into the night. I'm certainly hopeful for the best. We'll see what happens. To the north of Dutchman's Trail, towering over is the Black Mountain. Dutchman's Trail has been nice and easy for me so far today, not too overgrown, a smooth sandy path. Some of these cacti are really impressive. I mean, this bad boy is, I don't know, 25 feet tall. misty mountains out here along the Calvary Trail. I assume that that's a pretty rare sight for this area. That is Malapai Mountain to the north. It's been misting for about an hour or so now. Not too bad at all. I hope that it'll stay like this. That's the way I'm heading. Down into Boulder Canyon. Both the Dutchman's Trail and the Calvary Trail that I've been on so far today have spoiled me. Nice and easy trails. Hopefully the rest of my day can continue in that same vein. I'm at the intersection of the Calvary Trail and the Boulder Canyon Trail. The last little stretch of the Calvary Trail was a bit more difficult, rocky and steep, but not too bad overall. I'm now 
joining on the Boulder Canyon Trail and the rain is a little harder but still quite manageable at this point in time. Still raining. It's been alternating between a mist and a light shower all day today. This is a pretty canyon to hike through. Lots of scenery to look at. The Boulder Canyon Trail hasn't been too difficult terrain wise. There have been a bunch of crossings back and forth of the river and sometimes the trail would pop out to the river and then not actually cross so you just gotta kind of be cognizant of where it's going and where you're supposed to be going. I'm now done with the Boulder Canyon Trail and we'll be taking the second water trail to camp where I'll be looking for a spot around Second Water Spring. The beginning of the Second Water Trail has taken me into a very lush canyon here. Decent little climb there. I believe this is dirt tank along the second water trail. I've come farther than I anticipated today, making good time, feeling good, but would like to find a nice campsite before too long. Well, at this point, I've changed up my plans for the day pretty dramatically. I just passed a nice couple who said that if I go another mile or so farther down the second water trail, that I should come to a nice flat area with some good camping. And I believe that is going to be my new goal for the day. Home sweet home. Not more than 10 minutes farther down the trail, I found this quaint little tent spot here. Looks to be fairly well protected from any wind that might come through. And it's a beautiful area with some pools of water to filter. This is going to be the move for me. It is near impossible to separate fact from fiction in the legend of the Lost Dutchman's gold mine to determine if it actually existed, but historical records do indicate the Dutchman selling $250,000 worth of gold to the U.S. Mint in the 1880s. Let's take a look at the map for day three. I started at my campsite along the Barge Creek, followed the Dutchman's Trail through Marsh Valley to connect with the Calvary Trail, which I took for several miles until I came to Boulder Canyon Trail through Boulder Canyon, Second Water Trail over the Garden Valley, then I came down Second Water about halfway to set up camp for the night. Day three was about nine miles. Now the rains are moving in again and it's getting dark soon and to be honest with you I didn't want to go back out and stand in the rain again so Today's outro taking place in the comfy confines of my shelter. Great day today, a much easier day physically than the past two days. Gentler navigation, basically no thorny bushwhacking to take care of. Obviously the rain was a new challenge today, but it wasn't hard throughout most of the day, so it wasn't a, a huge deal for me. Beautiful, beautiful scenery along uh, pretty much all the trails that I came through. Well, the thing that brought the biggest smile to my face was the people that I got to meet along the way. Met a fella who was out doing a 12 day trip in the superstitions and also met a group of three hikers who we chatted twice. They passed me coming down and then once I got set up, they, they passed me coming back and had some good talk with them. They were gone maybe 20 minutes and I saw them coming back and they had walked all that way and then came back to, to bring me a whole nice bottle of, of tasty clean water. So that was really cool for them to go that extra effort to bring me some water here. And, uh, you know, like I said, the, the, the people that I met along the way definitely brought the biggest smile to my face of the day. Today is actually New Year's Eve. I can't think of a cooler area to ring in the New Year than the Superstition Mountains. When I go to bed tonight, it'll be 2021. When I wake up, it'll be 2022. I'm gonna get some dinner in me here, and as long as nothing crazy happens, that'll be the end of day three. Good night. Good morning. 
Made it to day four of my backpacking adventure in the Superstition Mountains. The penultimate day of my trip and also the first day of a new year. Now, you may look at the calm, sunny, clear morning today and think that maybe last night was similar, but unfortunately for me, that was not the case. A tremendous storm blew through, heavy rains, one big clap of thunder that rolled through the mountains, and the worst part was the brutal gusty winds that blew through. Now my campsite here was really perfect for withstanding a rainstorm. The soil was soft and loose, the water just drained water away quickly, but for those same characteristics it was a bad place to withstand a windstorm. And thrice throughout the night my tent collapsed on me and I had to get up and put it back up. Uh, the first time was just before 3 a.m. and it was still raining so I tried to get up quickly. Everything got wet already. Put, the, put my tent back up, went back in. Uh, just before 4 a.m. it collapsed again due to the winds. So I got up, grabbed some more rocks, tried to make things sturdier and just before 5 a.m. it collapsed for the third time. Uh, fortunately the 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. collapses the rain had pretty much tapered off so at least I just got to get out uh, in the wind and not the rain but I gathered some more rocks stacked them up again and that was the final collapse of the night for me so a uh, very difficult night one of the more difficult nights that I've endured in the backcountry certainly uh, a New Year's transition that I'm never going to forget but now the sun is out. It's a beautiful day. I've been having a slow morning in camp, just letting things dry out a little bit. But I'm gonna get packed up soon and get headed on the trail. I've got somewhere I believe in the seven to eight mile range today. Hopefully this will be my easiest day of the trip so far. And I'm looking forward to what looks to be a beautiful day. When I set up last night, there was no flowing water, but I'm getting ready to hit the trail with my new buddy George. He's teaching me a lot about this area. We're gonna hike together for a little bit on this beautiful day. Getting closer and closer to Weaver's Needle along the top of Black Mesa. Pretty day today, albeit windy. Well, you don't think of crossing too many raging rivers in Arizona, but that's what we're facing today. George made it over successfully, now it's my turn. Woo! George and I enjoyed a late lunch after crossing the river. Now we're going to head a little further before we start to climb up Bull Pass. Heading up. I made it up to the top of Bull Pass. Looking down at the other side. Got a couple miles to go to camp for the night. Heading down, down, down. We finished up the Bull Pass Trail. Now we're hopping on the Dutchman's Trail. Should be our final trail of the day towards camp.
back underneath the Black Mountain along Dutchman's Trail. Water levels are extraordinary down there. Much different than when I came through not too long ago. Home sweet home. Made to camp for the night. I'm going to take this little alcove here back in the Charlie Boys area. The sun set long ago in the canyon here. It's starting to get a little chilly, so per usual, it'll be time to scurry and get set up. One purported explanation put forth for the legend of the Lost Dutchman's gold mine was that he stole the gold from his job at Vulture Mine, the most productive gold mine in Arizona history, and made up the Lost Mine story to explain the theft. Let's take a look at the map for day four. I started at my campsite along Second Water Trail, retraced my steps up Second Water to connect to the Black Mesa Trail across Black Mesa, through a few intersections until I came to Bull Pass Trail, followed that up and over to the Dutchman's Trail, back along the way I came previously, and set up on the side of LaBarge Creek. Day four was about seven miles. Day four on my backpacking adventure in the Superstition Mountains has been the best day of the trip. There were no thorny bushwhacks and there was no rain, both of which made me very happy today. It's been great to get to hike with my buddy George all day and hear a lot about the area from him. It was cool to come over Bull Pass and see all the great views up there and I really enjoyed getting to see Weaver's Needle throughout the day as well. I wasn't sure if I was going to get to see it on my route, but saw it poking up there, so I enjoyed that. Got camp set up, going to get some warm clothes on, get some dinner in me, and that'll be the end of day four. Good night. Good morning. Made it to day five, the final day of my backpacking trip in the Superstition Wilderness, Tonto National Forest, Arizona. I had a cold night last night, coldest night of the trip by far. Temperatures dipped to right around the freezing mark, but very happily there was no rain for me, and it was much, much better than the previous night going through that storm. It's been an incredible trip for me out here. The time has seemingly flown by, uh, blinked, and now it's day five and I got to pack out and get ready to head home. Awesome adventure. I've got to see so many cool sights, all the different canyons and mesas and needles, all the cacti really brought a smile to my face and met a lot of cool people along the way as well. The sun is just starting to get down to the bottom of the canyon here. It's warming rays feel very nice. I'm going to get camp packed up. I've got somewhere in the range of, I believe, seven to eight miles to go today. And I'm going to start out with a very cold crossing of LaBarge Creek. So that'll get me awake if I'm not already. I'm going to get packed up and there'll be time to hit the trail. Let's take a look at the map for day five. I'll start along my campsite at LaBarge Creek, follow the Dutchman's Trail. For several miles to connect to the Bluff Spring Trail which will then take me back to the Peralta Trailhead. Day 5 will be about 7 miles for a trip total of approximately 41 miles. Looking down Charlie Boys Canyon. This area pretty much seems to be the heart of the superstitions. Everyone you talk to is either heading here or coming from here. Served as my home for two nights of the trip. Just got my feet dry and <laughs> now it's back to another wet foot crossing for me.
I skipped the third one, but this is my fourth wet foot crossing of the morning. I've just been hiking along in my Crocs at this point, not bothering to switch back and forth. They've been so often. Made it across my fifth wet foot crossing of the day. Unfortunately, it looks like that big tree right there may have been brought down in the floods the other night. Looks pretty recent. A green tunnel, the sound of roaring water. I must have hiked right on back home to North Carolina. A really nice wooded camping area along the Dutchman's Trail. Sixth wet foot crossing of the day. This will be my last for at least a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pop my boots back on once I get across here. Slow going in the Crocs, but not too bad really. Looking down from a high on the Dutchman's Trail. A clear sunny day. Finishing up my last stretch of the Dutchman's Trail. I've been on the Dutchman's Trail every day of this trip except day two. Now I'll be on the Bluff Springs Trail to take me back towards Peralta Trailhead. Peralta Trailhead, that's where I'm heading. This is looking back the way I've come. Beautiful hiking through here. A lot of flowing water, which I'm sure is not normal. I climbed up to this rock formation off the trail, and there's a very sweet waterfall right there. A couple day hikers gave me the tip to come up here and check it out. Some great views all around, not just the uh, waterfall. It's chilly on this dark side of the mountain. Case in point, it's almost 3 p.m. and there's still some ice. Dropping down a mile or so from the trailhead. I can see cars glistening at the trailhead. I'm a couple feet from the trailhead. Five days in the superstitions, done and dusted. Incredible scenery, challenging situations, cool people. What more could I ask for when exploring a new corner of the world? Two things I'll call out about visiting the soups. Firstly, the amount of water that I've had out here is abnormal. It's very important to plan around the good, reliable water sources. And secondly, there seems to kind of be two sides of the superstitions. One, the trails are nicely maintained, relatively easy to follow, not a ton of thorns in the way. The other side, trails are very difficult, very thorny. So know what you're getting into when you pick where you want to come. But I've had a great time out here and have loved every step. Until next time, thanks for tuning in to Lane's World. Goodbye.